Thank you. Uh, now I get to talk to you guys about general mental health and substance use treatment here with Mercy Care. So what exactly is general mental health and substance use? Well, there are many different types of general mental health issues, such as depression or anxiety, which are some of the most common ones. Substance use is the overuse or dependency of a substance. Sometimes that overuse and dependency of the substance can cause harm to you as an individual or cause harm to others. And co-occurring concerns are when you deal with both a, a general mental health concern, so anxiety, depression, along with substance use concern at the same time. Now, as you see, as you will see when this presentation is complete, we have many services available, uh, such as integrated care, outpatient services, medication-assisted treatment, uh, substance use residential programming. Uh, your pro, your, your uh, journey, however, will begin by sitting down with one of our contracted general mental health and substance use providers to complete an assessment. Now, that, that assessment will be part of your intake process. They will complete this comprehensive assessment to help you identify treatment needs um, that are appropriate for you. Now, they'll ask you a lot of questions that might feel intrusive, questions regarding your history of substance use, your family history, uh, any challenges you may have faced or adverse you may have faced as a child, you know, traumatic incidences, uh, it's imperative that you share as much as you feel comfortable sharing in order to better identify which type of treatment would be best for you. Then at that point, you would work with your provider and any other individual in your life that you feel support to help identify which services would be most appropriate as you move forward. Now, we have a wide array of different specific service types. And if we broke it down by type of specific service, evidence-based practices associated with that service, we would be here all day. So what we'll do is, here's the kind of a nice, easy slide to kind of give you some highlights over the things that we offer. We'll touch on the actual service continuum, stuff like outpatient services, intensive outpatient services, substance use residential services, residential treatment, things like that today. But for more specific things, please feel free to visit our website or reach out to the provider directly to talk about things like content behavior therapy, which focuses on relationships that we have with our thoughts and how those thoughts influence how we feel and how those feelings influence our behavior. So there's also dialectical behavior therapy, therapy and EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing therapy. These are all evidence-based practices that are available within our system of care. Now we also have currently 78 contracted providers with you know, hundreds of different locations throughout the state. Um, this information is also available on our website. And specifically for ACC adults, uh, these providers are searching to be placed in Maricopa County, Pinal, and Gila County, which is where our ACC contract currently resides. Now, for the sake of this presentation, we're going to walk you guys through the ASAP continuum of care. So there's five different levels of care as it relates to to ATEM, the middle levels, the 1.0 outpatient, 2.1, 2.5, 3.1, 3.3, 3 3.5 are what we'll be focusing on today. The lowest level, that 0.5, is just early intervention, things within your community, outpatient services, that other kind of lowest level of care, and that 4.0 is the most intensive level of care that we offer within this uh, programming. So let's start with outpatient. So, when an individual, such as yourself, seeks treatment uh, from our general mental health and substance use providers, they go to typically an outpatient provider to begin with. This is a place that will provide services to you less than nine hours a week. Um, anything more than that is a little more intensive. They will provide you some support, uh, medication and ma management, something they might provide, case management, counseling. They also serve as what's called your paneling agency. What it means is once you start getting services from them and they submit any billing to us, we now know that you're connected to them. So if at any point you get into, you reach some challenges and you interact with our crisis system or you go into the hospital, we know who you're paired with and we'll be able to reach out to them in order to have them support you as it relates to discharge planning and then re-engage you uh, for continued services. So again, typical services that offer at this outpatient level of care is counseling, that intake assessment that we previously talked about, case management services, living skills, employment supports, things like that. Next level up, also part of the outpatient level services, we also offer psychiatric services and medication management. So it's pretty typical and a best practice for individuals who are struggling with depression to take medications to help them 
regulate their emotions and their mood, but also with anxiety as well. So the, the outpatient service provider will also provide those psychiatric services. Now we have several different providers that offer psychiatric services. Here are some that are listed here on the screen. Their information is available on our website. And all these providers also have their own website if you feel like you would rather reach out to them directly. Now, you do not need a referral in order to interact with any of these providers. Feel free to engage them directly and, and we'll do what we call self-referral. That will allow you to not have to you know, wait in any wait any lines, not have to wait for other people to kind of get documentation completed for you to start your treatment. This allows you to have direct control over the work that you're doing. Now, also part of this outpatient, outpatient level of care is medication-assisted treatment. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, medication-assisted treatment is an evidence-based practice that is shown to help treat individuals struggling with substance use. Now, MAT services, is what it's called, uh, uses uh, FDA-approved medications such as methadone, suboxone, vivitrol, buprenorphine, in combination with counseling services. So that could be individual counseling, family counseling, couples counseling, intensive outpatient treatment that have involves some counseling. Um, and behavioral therapies provide really a whole member approach to treatment for substance use. So again, medication assisted treatment is a combination of these medications and these counseling services. And because addiction affects multiple areas of your brain, the reward system of your brain, and that prefrontal cortex that involves thinking, it's important that you understand and utilize multiple treatment modalities in order to address any challenges associated with that. We have several different uh, current MAP providers. Here's some that are listed here. They all have multiple sites. I wanna bring your attention to our three access points. In the West Valley, we have intensive treatment systems located on 75th Avenue and, uh, I don't know, Calumbeck area. Um, we also have Community Bridges located out in Mesa, East Valley, and then community, community, uh, community Medical Services in our Central Corridor. These providers are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if at two o'clock in the morning, you feel like you need to get some treatment regarding your you know, opioid addiction, feel free to go to any of these providers. They can engage you in services immediately and get you connected to a provider either closer to your area or they can work with you directly. Now the next level up is an intensive outpatient services. This is usually nine or more hours a week, often uh, for substance use or other mental health related concerns. These providers offer services on weekends, some evenings, and during the day that best fit your needs. Also, this serves as a step up and a step down level of care. So if you're an outpatient level, and you feel you need more intensive support, intensive outpatient is where to go. That's why it's in the name. Also, this serves as a step down. So individuals who are in residential treatment or in inpatient services may go to this level of care. So it serves as an entry point and active point for services. Here's a list of some of our intensive outpatient providers. Again, these providers have multiple locations. Please feel free to reach out to uh, them directly or search our website for those locations and information. The next level of care is our substance use residential treatment. So again, using the ACAM continuum as a guide, a provider who provides uh, residential treatment will complete an ACAM with you and to see if you meet the criteria for this level of care. It's their, it's their responsibility to, to screen you and provide those, that assessment. That assessment is then sent to us for authorization. Once you're authorized, you're able to remain in those services as long as you qualify. Now, it does have a service range limitation from 30 to 120 days. While you're there, the first original 30 days Typically, service is a, as like a social detox. You'll work with that provider in order to kind of best identify areas of support for you. Um, and then you will remain there until you complete treatment. Now that 30 to 120 days is limitations placed on uh, the provider by the provider. If you get to 121 days and the provider still is able to serve you and you still meet criteria, uh, you're able to continue your stay there. The provider is also responsible for assisting you identifying where you would be transitioning your services to after you leave, uh, where you will be residing, and help you identify potential financial support as well. Here's a list of some of our providers. Additionally, 
as you can see, that some providers serve men and women. And we have some providers that actually allow for dependent children to also attend. So if you have a child under the age of six, um, you don't have to be forced to choose between your, your wellness and your recovery and your children as these providers that are listed here uh, that say with dependent children allows you to stay there with your little ones uh, to get your treatment and get support. I'll pause here for a second so you guys are able to get another name available. We also have uh, eating disorder treatment. So this does also need a authorization to reside here at the residential treatment facility. Within Community Connections, which is our contract provider list, you are able to receive residential treatment and intensive treatment, uh, intensive outpatient programming. Uh, they provide you with uh, supportive peer groups that understand the challenges that are, you know, arise from challenges related to eating. Uh, uh, by living together and by by participating in their intensive treatment clinic. Uh, this continual therapeutic support, uh, individuals can learn uh, to practice and making healthy life decisions and experiencing feelings that are associated with their disorder. Uh, you also learn how to be mindful about the feelings that you might have regarding anxiety or fear or shame and to how to experience those feelings in ways that won't compromise your ability to, to function healthily in your life. Now, we also have some specific programming for uh, first episode centers, right? So first episode psychosis providers treat adolescents and young adults ages from 15 to 35 who are experiencing psychosis often for the first time. They offer specialized treatment, those early situations, uh, those early kind of signs of those things, so psychiatric illnesses such as psychosis, schizophrenia, schizoaffective challenges. Uh, signs of these illness may include trouble uh, having determined uh, what's real and what's not, paranoia, hallucinations, delusions, odd behavior or thinking, feelings that you want to isolate, and then also difficulties at work and school. Uh, their mission at these clinics, value-wise and uh, resilient health, is to reduce the impact of early psychosis through symptom alleviation and, and reintegration into your community. So they'll provide use of you and your family support and opportunity to discuss your concerns. You'll be able to receive evidence-based uh, treatment regarding these specific challenges, along with educational professional support and goals uh, as part of a supportive community. Now, as, additionally, they, they will offer clinical evaluation and assessments, family education and support. The typically uh, cognitive behavior therapy is the evidence-based practice of choice with this, uh, medication management, cognitive remediation, and then support and employment education along with engaging the community to help individuals uh, identify and engage membership. <clears throat> Additionally, we also have 17 different providers with uh, dozens of different locations throughout the, our geographical areas that provide integrated healthcare, which is an approach characterized by a high degree of connection uh, between different health professionals. What makes integrated health really unique is that there's a shared information involving your your physical health concerns and your behavioral health concerns, and as they're often interrelated. So these teams um, have nurses, psychologists, counselors, case managers, all working together to best support you the best way possible. This allows them to identify challenges that might be associated with substance use and employment and how they can bring, uh, address those situations completely. Uh, they might also assist you with housing concerns and psychiatric support as well. So this, again, allows you to get support on the physical side and the mental side of your needs. Here's a list of some of our integrated care providers, again, with multiple locations throughout our geographical areas. Uh, additionally, we also have what we call transition aid youth providers. So there's a pay program that you'll hear about within our children's system of care presentation. For this, we have providers that are specifically contracted as both adult and children's providers that allow for members who are aging out of the children's system to continue in services and support without the need 
to leave their existing provider and their existing support. So uh, at Southwest Network, Arizona Insurance Association, Touchstone, uh, Arizona Youth and Family, Open Heart, A New Leaf, Rio Salado, uh, Jewish Family and Children Services, also known as JSDF, members who, are turning, who turn 18 are able to stay there and continue to engage in those treatment without the need for transition. Now, this is only eligible for members who are not SMI eligible. So uh, an individual is 17 and they qualify for SMI services and they choose to go that route, they'd be uh, assigned to one of our SMI providers. But beyond that, this allows individuals to continue within treatment. This completely eliminates service disruptions, which has shown to cause some challenges later on in life due to, you know, gaps in treatment. It also allows these providers are also able to serve immediate family members. Uh, so a kid who's in the, in the children's system, they have a, a, a parent that needs some support, they're also able to serve that parent as well. So the whole entire family can get support and uh, find wellness as a group and as a team. Now, along the way, uh, as you continue your treatment, provider is required to discuss your treatment options and goals on a regular basis. They're also required to do regular assessments. So annually, your provider is going to be asking you some additional questions. Please bear with them as their goal is to just identify areas of continued need and support and figure out ways to, to get you down that kind of wellness journey, if you will. Now, our goal is also to provide you with resources and services you need to support you along the way. There's also things that you can do that can help. So. You may be able to assist us in helping others who would not qualify for access to Medicaid uh, by some special funding uh, for those who don't qualify, and that's going to be our grant area. And here's some additional resources that are currently available. Anytime you need to talk to anybody at Mercy Care, please feel free to reach out to our member services line. The number's listed there. Additionally, if you're ever in a situation when you feel like you're in crisis, we have crisis funds available 24-7. Um, if you feel lonely or need some additional support, we also have uh, a warm line. And then for veterans who are in need of support, we have our rally point uh, number there as well. Please keep this information handy for yourself or if you have a friend or family member who might be in need of support. We're a community that's all here to help together. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> 